What's going on, Future DDS family? We'd like to take a moment to recognize our sponsors for today's video, DAT Booster. DAT Booster is a DAT prep platform, which we've seen help plenty of students improve their scores and actually gain acceptance into dental school. We've done multiple giveaways in the past for this platform, and it's actually come full circle to the point where Nick has actually used the program to improve his scores, and he's actually applying for dental school right now. So I want to give him a moment to explain a little bit about his his journey, his process using the program, as well as, you know, give us a little bit more feedback about the platform himself. Yeah, of course. So first of all, I absolutely love DAT Booster. You know, I was studying for the DAT for over for over a year. So I've seen a lot of question banks and DAT Booster by far just seemed to be the most up to date. And I'll give you guys an example. When I was taking the biology section on my real DAT, I saw 15 questions word for word from DAT Booster. And I know I wouldn't have been able to get a 30 on the bio section without them. And I ultimately got a 27 academic average. So that's been a huge help in applying to dental schools. I highly recommend them to any pre-dent considering using their program. So another great thing about DAT Booster is the fact that they understand that you all are actual students, right? They know you have a lot to pay for being with applications and the actual DAT exam itself. And so what they do is they give you access to their platform to take one free test just to make sure that you like it and it's a good fit for you. Here at Future DDS, we always preach on preparation and we believe that the DAT Booster program is great prep for your DAT exam. If you all are interested and want some more information, go ahead and click the link in our description below. Now let's get back to the video. Hello, future DDS family and friends. My name is Dr. Marcus Ramos Pearson, and I am a class of 2022 graduate of the Lecom School of Dental Medicine. Now let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am originally from Durham, North Carolina, and I received my Bachelor's of Science in Biology from Queen's University of Charlotte in Charlotte, North Carolina. I would honestly say that all of my extracurriculars has impacted my journey into dental school and even beyond um, in some type of way, but I feel like the most impactful have been the ones where I have had a leadership role um, in those positions, such as being a team captain of my school's varsity cheerleading program, as well as being the class president um, for about three years at Queen's University. And through that, I was able to talk to my teammates and talk to my constituents, you know, help them with their problems. And I feel like that helped me you know, get out of my shell and actually do something to help other people in my community. And I feel like what also helped me out to, you know, kind of help me get out of my shyness, at least find coping mechanisms, is being in theater. I was in one production I was in my freshman year and then took additional theater classes as well. So that helped me out definitely with, you know, talking to, to other people. But I will also say being the co-founder and the editor-in-chief of my school's student-led peer review research journal, known as Quest, and is actually still in production today. So being able to help lead a team of people to get something done, as well as helping other students become published authors. And through Quest, I became a published author myself, where I did my own experimental research. And even my experimental research was what the start of Queen's University's research program as well. So I was able to help guide the research program and how it is today. And fun fact about me, I love to go Latin dancing. In fact, bachata is my favorite style. I was actually a child when I became interested in dentistry. It was my goal to become a dentist since I was three years old. I've always loved going to the dental office, always loved going to the doctor's offices as a kid. I know it sounds weird, but it just seemed like a really cool place to go. I love the sounds, the smells, just eating everything was, was actually really exciting to me. At the time, my parents really didn't like their jobs. So I was like, I don't want to do what they're doing because all they're doing is complaining. And then I would go to the dental office, see my dentist, and she's just having such a great time. She's always smiling, laughing. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to have fun at my future job or career. And I just stuck with it. Of course, I did delve into other 
career such as politics or you know go into law um, but I would say that every time I thought about those careers or even delved into them I was like oh you know I would do that in conjunction with being a dentist so because of that I just knew that being a dentist was for me my approach for studying for the DAT is what some people would consider unorthodox I'm a person who likes to just be thrown into the deep end so that I can figure out uh, how to properly manage or solve this problem. So what I did was I bought the Kaplan DAT test prep because it came with two practice exams. I took the first practice exam and then without even opening up the rest of the book, I just did it to see where I would land you know, on the scale you know, without any knowledge about the test at all. And I got about average on that practice exam, and I believe that was good for me so that I know exactly where to focus my studying at. And so I just read the rest of the book and did the second practice, practice test, as well as just go over my notes from my different um, biology classes and chemistry classes at Queen's University. So that's what worked best for me. When I took the actual DAT, I scored above average, which is where I was hoping to land. So I would say my three biggest tips would be to one, know your study habits. So do you study best and by yourself? Do you study best in a group? Number two, keep a consistent schedule. You want to just keep a set study schedule to make sure that you have a dedicated time and space to make sure that you can have the most effective study output. And also the third tip, I would say no when you're going to take the DAT in advance because a lot of times, you will hear this a lot, is that you need to begin with the end in mind. So not only you need to see yourself as a doctor, that's who already going to graduate, you need to see yourself doing well on the DAT and the best way to do that is to know when you're going to take it. So if you're a person who needs three months, five months, six months, whatever, be sure that you are truthful to yourself, stick to your study, and then you will be able to do well on the DAT. But I feel what separated me from the rest of the crowd of applicants in that cycle was simply the fact that I was a well-rounded student. I had done well in my academic classes, of course, but I had done so many other extracurriculars. You know, consistently throughout undergrad, I had about one to two jobs every semester I was doing, whether I was a work-study student or I was also a peer tutor at one point. And then I was also a biology lab assistant. So just somewhere in those, you know, between those three, I always had at least one to two jobs. I also wasn't involved in a lot of extracurriculars. Not only was I a cheerleader for all four years, I was a team captain my senior year. I was also a co-founder of the Queens University men's rugby program. So my senior year, I was also a dual athlete as well with my other jobs. I was also the co-founder of multiple clubs, including one of my favorites, which is the Quest Journal, Q-U-E-S-T, and that is a student-led uh, peer review research journal, which is where I am published. So not only was I the editor-in-chief of that research journal, I was also training my successor, and that Quest Journal is still in publishing today. And I believe, you know, being well-rounded is not only showing that you can be entrepreneurial and a leader, but also showing that you can listen to others. So, yes, I was in multiple clubs and extracurriculars, but I was just a normal, you know, person member. You know, I didn't have leadership positions in every club. I was just there to listen and help out as needed. So being able to draw your experiences from being at the top of the food chain and also at the bottom, you know, just being a helpful person shows that you know exactly where everybody can come from. And I believe that helped me out in my interview as well as my career as a doctor currently. I would say that my interview day was very unique as compared to other dental schools. In my previous interviews, um, most schools had a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews with just different key people on the, on the interview committee. However, LeeCom only has one group interview, and that's basically it. You would meet, of course, with one person from the actual dental medicine program, but then the other person will you know, be someone from any other schools that they have. 
because LECOM does have a school of pharmacy and a school of osteopathic medicine. So you may have someone from those two schools. And that is because LECOM has this mentality of using the group thought or group thinking so that everyone can have a different perspective on how to best care for the patient. So I would say that coming out of the interview, I felt really good about it because I was able to not only you know, get my ideas across in this group, but I was also able to collaborate with the other people in my group interview. So you know, I've expanded on their ideas and I even challenged my other interviewees on their thoughts. I was asking them probing questions as well. And I feel like that left a good mark in the interviewer's eyes. So here are some tips for the LECOM interview process. The first tip is that you should never be afraid to disagree with people. Of course, you need to do it respectfully. However, it shows that you are one, that you're listening because with your response, you do need to, of course, mention theirs, but then show some reasoning why you disagree with them. You don't have to say that they're wrong. In fact, most people probably aren't outright wrong in these interviews, but it shows that one, that you can stand on your own morals, but you also can see, you know, different thinking and possibly some flaws or ways to even help other people improve their thinking or even improve your thinking. I mean, of course, you may disagree, but it can even so show a highlight of your own thought process. Another tip is to, like I said, know yourself. If you're going to disagree with someone, you need to be ready to back up and support your own thoughts. I chose to attend Lecom Dental School for a few reasons. Number one was the location. It was in Central Florida. I'm a guy who doesn't like snow, and Florida doesn't ever get snow. So it worked out. Two, I actually received a personal phone call from the head of the interview committee. So he called me up one day and asked me like, hey, are you actually still interested in attending our school? And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you for calling. I appreciate it. I appreciate you asking. And so like, and he responded with, that's good because I want to let you know that you have been accepted into the LECOM dental school program. So he told me I would get a letter in the next few weeks, but he just wanted to confirm to make sure. I would also say uh, another reason why I accepted LECOM dental school was the fact that it is a team-based learning program with the PBL or problem-based learning. Of course, you would be in small groups to learn. And I feel like sometimes that's how I learn best. Of course, I did say earlier that at the time my learning style was being by myself, but going through and finishing up and doing some self-reflecting after and even during my undergraduate studies, I found out that group studying is actually where I learned the best. So going to a school that puts an emphasis on studying with others and collaboration, I figured, I figured that would be a win-win. I would say the transition from a pre-dental student to a full-on dental student is one of the most hardest transitions that I ever had to make in my life. Not simply because of location, going from North Carolina, which I have lived my whole entire life, and then moved to Florida, which I had no friends and no family moving down with me. So really, it was just me down there, and I had to basically you know, make my own new friends and my own new family. And I was a guy who I would consider myself shy. That can be hard at times. So and one of the other biggest transitions was simply going from a student who had done everything, like all the extracurriculars, all the activities, clubs, what have you, to focusing to just school. That is you know, one of the oddest transitions for me, simply because I felt like I had too much time on my hands, on my schedule. I mean, yes, I did study a lot, but I'm not a person who simply just studies. So trying to you know, work my new schedule around to just focusing on studying in dental school, at times that would make me depressed simply because that's just not what I was used to. And of course there was times that I felt like I had imposter syndrome and I felt what what led to that was demographics. I, so to admit at my school I was the only African American male in my class and I'm only half. The only other African American male was a, um, a third year student. So of course, two years above me at the time, but I didn't have a chance to interact with him as much because our classes just didn't 
Um, it just didn't cross over a whole lot. So uh, of course the other half is me being Hispanic. So trying to find you know camaraderie with different people was, was kind of hard, at least culturally. But I would say what did help was of course finding people with similar hobbies and activities so we would just hang out with each other, just get to know each other. But I also had, you know, one or two key faculty members that helped me out along the way and just let me know that it is possible to get through dental school. I would say a typical day for your first year dental student is very identical to a medical school student. Of course, we have our basic medical classes, but then we also have our dental classes mixed in with those. So just like a medical school student, we were taking anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, and every other basic medical class. But then we also had our dental classes mixed in. So some of the key classes we take were, of course, dental anatomy, as well as periodontology. All of that was taught in the first semester of dental school. So we would start off our day at about eight o'clock and then basically didn't get out to five o'clock that day. So. It was basically a full-time job. And then you had extra studying to do because of course you had so many classes and you need to set aside appropriate study time for all of them. So I would say um, the way I took breaks, I played video games honestly just to get my mind off of it. And then if I didn't play video games, I would go work out, you know, go for one or two, and I would even just hang out with friends and just get to know my fellow classmates. I would say what made me most excited about going to dental school was the amount of clinical hours. Since the spring semester of our first year, we would see so many different um, clinical cases. And not just you know on a TV screen or in a projector PowerPoint, but we actually go to our clinics and actually help out our third year or second year students as well. And as first years, we even had our own patients. We would you know do the hygiene portion of the AEGD program that was housed in our building. So we would take their patients, you know, of course do a profi or even scaling and gingivitis on them and then send them back to the AGD, AGD program. And then our second year, we were basically their assistants for our third years. And then the third year, we had our own patients in our own clinics. And same thing in the fourth year. So being able to just have that amount of clinical experience was definitely something to look forward to. I have two really big pieces of advice for you pre-dental students. One, don't be afraid to try new things. Because honestly, that's how I got involved and became a really well-rounded student. There was some random new activity or new club I haven't even thought about joining. And you know, I saw it, I was like, you know what? That might be interesting just to try out, just to see how it is. And half the time I fell in love with it and just kept doing it. And of course the other half is like, well, you know, at least I can say I tried it. And the second piece of advice is know when to take a break. Because I know as pre dental students, y'all are busy, busting your butt, studying, do whatever it is you need to do. But you also need to remember that breaks are needed so that your mind and your body can have a rest. Because burnout is one of the biggest things that stops dentists from being dentists. Because of course we get tired, we get stressed out. So you don't want that to happen before you even you know, pick up a hand piece. So that's what I would say is my two biggest pieces of advice. To the future DDS family and friends, thank you so much for having me here with you today. And if you would like to contact me for any additional questions, feel free to contact me on Instagram, Cobra Reality, and that is C-O-B-R-A underscore R-O-Y-A-L-I-T-Y. And if that doesn't work, you can always contact me through email, which is mrrp32 at outlook.com. So to the future DDS family and friends and to your other pre-dental students, I wish you the best in your future dental career.